Egypt. Jeez, I can't say it's my favorite country. It's not exactly a laws here. I can't say things here have gone smoothly. I will never come back here again. But I can say with confidence that today is my last day. For you, or for any of you, what do you love about Egypt? Leaving the bustling cityscape of Cairo and heading into the desert was one of the best choices I've ever made. This is a place in Arabic, I can't pronounce it, but in English, it means difficult place. A name that could be used for all of Egypt. Leaving the country would be even better, but that will come soon. We still have one more day here. Can you, like, write it? Yeah. Guys, you don't have to learn other languages. You just figure it out. Last time, we had a little mishap at the camel market. No, 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 no. This guy right now, he's asking for money. But so far, life in the oasis seems to be mostly free of conflict and police. Oh. <laughs> the way folks live here is completely different from the big city. What are you feeding this thing? Today, I'm joining a couple villagers so I can walk a day in their shoes. This is something they do often here. I want to see how they live and, of course, how they eat. I have no idea what that is. This is my last chance to squeeze some good moments out of Egypt. This one's good. Yeah. And it all starts here. Today is our fourth day shooting here in Egypt. What we figured out so far is the place to shoot is actually not Cairo. Even though we have proper permits, even though the press office of Egypt has said it's okay for us to shoot, almost every time we've come up against the authorities or police, they have tried to either stop us or make us delete our footage. So we're trying to be extra careful. That's why we're here. This is an oasis. A place in the middle of the desert, about a five hour drive from Cairo, that has so many different natural water springs that a huge population is able to survive out here. Today, we're spending the entire day with an Egyptian farmer. We're gonna see how he lives, what he eats, and hopefully, no police. We'll see. We are here. We're inside the farm. This is one of his compounds, a place where he cooks and hangs out during the day. This is the gentleman himself. Uh, Assalamu alaikum. Wa Oh, he said welcome. Meet Ahmed, a villager who's dedicated his life to the sun, wind, and sands of the desert. This is fantastic. I'm so excited to be here because we're going to see a very unique way of life. And it starts here with his breakfast. Render down lamb fat in a blazing hot wood fire. Then add tomato. Then green bell pepper. Season with salt, pepper, cumin, and cook until the sauce forms. That is dish one. In the second dish, he has the same vegetables, but he adds one ingredient I've never seen before. Come take a look. This round-shaped biscuit is called kishk, an Egyptian ethnic food that's been eaten for thousands of years. It's super hard. It's basically a fermented wheat milk mixture that's been sun-dried until it's dehydrated and hard. It's so interesting. It's super hard, grainy, but it has a cheesy taste to it, too. Have you ever left cheddar cheese out on the counter for too long and it's dried out a little bit, but you ate it anyways because you're an animal like me? It tastes a little bit like that. And so, of course, he doesn't eat it like this. He mixes it in with these other vegetables. It's going to kind of rehydrate it, bring it back to life, and we're going to see what that tastes like pretty soon. I'm excited. Break the kishk into smaller chunks, then cook with tomato and green bell pepper. Season with salt, pepper, sugar, and cumin. Now, a third dish is being prepared by Ibrahim. I am here with Ibrahim. He's also making some breakfast too. This is full. Oh, he wants to feed me already. All right, thank you. Oh, that's good. Yeah, fit. Tasty. That's this is what we saw. I think one of the first places we went to in Cairo. What's interesting is when you start having the same type of food in different places or regions, everyone can make it a little bit differently. The one we had was more of a paste with kind of crushed up mashed fava beans. Mm -hmm. And this is kind of a combination. It's got the fava bean paste with whole beans in there too. There's tomato, there's green bell pepper, and there's spices. I think I like this style more. Good morning. <laughs> this looks incredible. This is just breakfast and it's so many different items. This is called sun bread. I'm told this bread is kind of cooked half in the sun and half in the oven. Just like with the Egyptian bread, they use that as the utensil. Full? Mm. I'm going to start with that. Mm -hmm. How do you say delicious? Laziz. Laziz. I'm going to work my way up to the kishk, but this one is... Shamak the mountain. That's outstanding. It's like the world's best marinara sauce. The sun bread is awesome. It's like half stale, half crispy, but it's the perfect vehicle for all these foods. What's your favorite thing here? All the gifts from God are good. Good answer. 
This is the one I've been wanting to try. The kishk tastes a little bit cheesy when I had it in its raw form. Let's try it out now. Mmm. Oh, that's awesome. This is so good. It's hard to put my finger on it though. It's, I mean, it has the tomato, some fresh vegetables. Oh God, how do you explain that? The texture is like a coarse oatmeal, but the flavor is just something completely unique. There's some acid from the tomato and then a lot of richness from the milk in that bread. It's confusing, but it's really good. Is this a normal breakfast? Is this how you'd usually start out your day? Alhamdulillah. So I noticed there's no meat here. Do you have a meal where you usually eat meat? Lunch. Which animals do you eat? The sheep. How often are you eating the sheep? Quite often, because we prefer to eat our own food. We don't want to get from anywhere else. Far from modern conveniences or really modern anything, Life out here is all about self-sufficiency, so farming and raising cattle are essential traits. For farmers out here, what is the most lucrative endeavor? He said both. The balance is important, otherwise this imbalance will force you to need things from other places and so on. Mm. These men don't actually live here. Their homes are further into the village. This is a separate space for their cattle. This is the farm behind me now. Almost all the animals are kept within these brick walls. Let's go inside and check it out. First, what we see, the cows. Why, I want to pet you. They don't want to be pet, it turns out. Cows are used for agricultural work, like tilling, irrigating, and carting. Oh no, we have a situation. They also provide the usual meat and milk. I may have to give up on this whole petting thing. Uh, it doesn't look like it's working out. And their waste helps to fertilize this already stubborn, sandy soil. I'm an unruly bull. Is that a bull? Hold on, let me look underneath. It's a bull. Horses and donkeys carry freight, goods, or supplies. One of my favorites. Donkeys. Actually, you'll still see them being used in the streets of Cairo, one of Africa's biggest cities. Can you, like, ride it? Yeah. <laughs> That's incredible. Wait, me? Uh, I think I might be a little too heavy. <laughs> then there's the sheep one of the most commonly eaten proteins in the country. Fun and games are over. We are heading into the sheep pen right now, and our butcher is here. He's gonna do his best to catch one. Oh my gosh, he made quick work of that. I was told earlier they're eating about one sheep every two weeks. That's like 25 a year, that's a lot. He's taking the lamb to the slaughter point now, and then you guys know what happens next. Here in this Muslim-majority country, it is the belief of those following Islam that all living creatures were made by their God. Animals exist for the benefit of human beings, and they must be treated with kindness and compassion. When it comes to taking an animal's life for the purpose of sustaining your own, the slaughter must be carried out in the appropriate ritual manner. The name of God is invoked in order to emphasize the sanctity of life and that the animal is being killed for food with God's consent. After all its blood drains, it's time for butchering. Here, aside from the blood which is never eaten, nothing else goes to waste. The skin is skillfully peeled off and will later be used for leather production. The organs and meat will soon be cooked up into several dishes. Dish one, the grilled lamb meat. The meat is chopped down to small chunks. Ribs, tenderloin, sirloin, shoulder, front and hind quarters, all of it together. Marinated with onion, salt, lemon, and black pepper. That gets grilled on an open fire. I'm here with Ibrahim Habibi. Yes. Hi, ah, call me Habibi. I mean, Habibi. Friend. We're making a few different dishes out of this sheep. It's going first on this grill. Oh, good. oh yes, you get all the onions up in there. The cooking style here is a balance between speed and flavor. It's practical, efficient, and these cooking methods can be done pretty much anywhere. At the same time, it's given just enough love with seasonings and spices so it tastes great too. That's really good, really delicious. Crisped up a little bit, almost dried out just on the edges So Once you kind of crunch through the surface area, it's all super juicy inside. The main course has just started, and this is something special. Kabza, a dish made of rice and meat well known in Arab cuisine, but each country makes it a little bit differently. This is how they do it here. They 
parboil meat in a big pot along with tomato and green bell pepper. Then season with salt and black pepper. Then let it simmer for an hour. Right now, we're making our main dish. This is called kepsa. This smells good. Yeah. Now he's gonna put in the rice, please. It's got kind of like an orangey broth. I think from the meat itself, plus the spices together, the tomato, the onion, the rice is gonna be flavored. And then as you're eating it, there's gonna be big chunks of meat inside. Wait, how long? 15 or 20. About 20 minutes and uh, that's gonna be ready. Thank you. While waiting for the kapsa to be cooked, Ibrahim brings me to his fields for a surprise. So this here is the power of the oasis. A huge vegetable garden of Ibrahim. Here he's growing all types of plants. He's gonna show me some of his giant vegetables. Despite the arid climate, farming isn't impossible in the oasis, as long as you have water. Here in Ibrahim's field, he's growing tomatoes, onions, and these. Oh, oh take a look at this. That is crazy. Look at this, this is a giant turnip. He fed this the ooze from TMNT too. He's gonna pick one of these and we're gonna have this with our dinner. It's crazy because it's already almost out of the ground. What? I've seen turnips maybe this size. This is 10 times bigger than anything I've seen before. Whoa, this one's even bigger. Okay, that is the record breaker right there. Shit, oh. <laughs> That's legit 20 pound turnip here. Freaking huge. So we have our veggies. I think we have to get back to the meat and uh, hopefully we can incorporate this too. This is an incredible spread we have here. The culmination of many people's effort coming together in one big meal. All right, I love these guys. Usually when we do a scene with people, it's like, no, you can eat, be natural. Everyone here is looking forward to it. They're taking bites and they're not holding back at all. That's what I love to see. Here, the world's biggest turnip. They've just been chopped into pieces here and served raw. I'm gonna try one of these. Huh? Not bad. It's interesting because it's not as crisp and it is a bit woody. I heard when they get really big, they can be kind of woody tasting. This is the grilled lamb we saw earlier. And then this is kapsa. This beautiful blend of rice and meat together. <gasps> it looks like a lamb shank. This is incredible. Wow. That is delicious. The lamb itself is super tender, juicy, protein. It's just falling off the bone. You really get the full flavor of the actual lamb. Mix that with some rice. Mm. The only thing you have to watch out for is bone fragments because they absolutely pulverized the sheep as they were kind of cutting it down to size. When is the last time you had kapsa? I'm better for this. Last night. Really? <laughs> and you're not sick of it? No. Never. Beautiful. It's very delicious. Between the grilled lamb and this kind of more boiled lamb, it's like you cover all your texture bases. One is kind of smoky and crunchy. The other one's super soft and tender. So you kind of get every beautiful aspect of the lamb. I want to try this one. Braised organs and meat in a mixture of onion and tomato. Seasoned with salt, cumin, and black pepper. That's too hot. This is the spleen. Okay. Sheep spleen. It is. Mm. Super minerally, bungy, savory. This is a beautiful taste. The kidney. The kidney? Oh, wow. That's a small kidney. Mmm. That was good. I'm loving all these organs. No. The throat. Oh, the throat? This is interesting. This is the esophagus. And this is something I didn't know that people <laughs> ate ever, except I had it about a week and a half ago in Zimbabwe for the first time ever. <laughs> Here I am in Egypt, and I'm being offered esophagus once again. What is it you like about this? Mm. It's crunchy. Very crunchy. <laughs> this is a beautiful meal. It's super delicious, satisfying. I really appreciate it. Shukran. Shukran. For you, or for any of you, what do you love about Egypt? If you're perceptive, and if you've watched this whole series, you may have noticed that I don't really like it here. Now, as my trip draws to a close, I'm grasping for something positive about this place that I can take home with me. One, one at a time, one at a time. History, civilization, nature, open air, excellent weather, and those who come to Egypt and drink from the Nile will always come back. Egypt is the center of the world. Whatever you crave on earth is found in Egypt. Medicine, science, archaeology, 
يكفي يكفي ان مصر سبحان الله عز وجل رب العالمين. He said Egypt is mentioned several times in the Quran. So in the Quran God says enter Egypt in peace. So it's the safest place on the planet. Another from another mother. Hey! That was a donkey! What's its name? Mickey Mouse. Oh my god, it's happening! Habibi. Hi, call me Habibi. I need a friend. I don't need to fall in love with every place I go. Every minute we're shooting in the city, we're looking over our shoulders. I don't really like it. In my point of view, Jeez. even though it echoes from a large platform, it's still one among millions. Keep rolling, but be less obvious. People in Egypt have gone through a lot, especially in the last 10 years. Awesome. If things are going to indeed change for the best, it's going to take time. <laughs> and when it happens, or if it happens, I won't be here to see it. Today's gonna be brutal. I have no idea what to expect. It's gonna be bittersweet. It's sweet because we're getting out of Cairo and I can't wait to be literally anywhere else but Egypt. But it's bitter because it is uncertain whether we're gonna get back the roughly 10 to $12,000 worth of gear that the government officials here thought it was appropriate to take from me. In the end, after one more hellish series of interactions with airport authorities, I'm finally given back my hard drives, batteries, lights, and cameras that they took from me on the first day. In true Egyptian fashion, they treated me like a criminal to the very end, walking me to my gate and ensuring I didn't open any bags before entering the plane. When the airplane wheels finally lifted off, well, that was one of the best moments I'd experienced since I got here.